Black Consciousness Day was celebrated on November 20 with a full day of special conversations. We're very happy to speak about that day and the entire Black Consciousness Festival with Creative and Strategic Director Nadella Oya and Content and Communications Director Sean Samad. Sean, I want to start with you, please. What is the genesis of the festival? Uh, so the festival started um, humbly at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine. Uh, there's a Brazilian studies minor program and so to kind of raise awareness for the students who are studying Brazilian studies and Portuguese, um, it started off as, as just a series of activities that would have been hosted at the university for the students. Um, of course, with things changing this year with COVID-19, etc., cetera, um, coming out of those, those previous initiatives and in past years, the idea for the festival came about. And looking at other festivals that have been held, there were concerts and there were other things that naturally would have been allowing for a lot more face-to-face. -face. And Nadella, I want to ask you about the process of what are some of the things, the changes, some of those nitty-gritty logistics in terms of putting this festival together that, that happened this year? That is a fantastic question, especially because it does require a lot of nitty-gritty and logistical, digital logistics, digital gymnastics is what we've been through in the last five weeks or so. Um, so we're into the third week of the festival. We're actually in the last week of the festival. And the first three weeks were um, massive learning, especially for Sean and myself, as we made sure to get the digital platforms um, running as smoothly as we possibly can. We were learning as we went and we were, as we went along, sorry, and we got amazing support from people across the globe. So for instance, um, well, of course, you know, people will know Zoom and whatnot, but we were on Zoom, Facebook Live, YouTube, and we even had to develop some expertise in using StreamYard, especially for our Saturday night um, jam session. So between the conversations, um, the cultural activities, some people having to pre-record, upload stuff. Um, it has been amazing in terms of that, just that digital experience because of the, the COVID situation and the need to go um, online. The other thing that I found was really interesting is people's interest in the festival meant that they were really willing to support us in, in many different ways. So just in terms of finding you know guests um facilitators people to run some of the conversations in film in dance in music and you know just their own setup um on their ends uh, has really been interesting and i've also learned more time zones and um i was aware of, of when i first did geography so now i know about ast and and what the other night we had um a conversation that was 7 p.m. Trinidad time, 6 p.m. Jamaica time, 11 in London, and it was 8 a.m. in Korea for all of the panelists that were on for that particular conversation. So it has really been interesting. And also for Sean and I in the programming, we've had to pay a lot of attention in terms of the advertising of, of, the, of the different um, elements of the festival, because what is 7 p.m.? for us in the Eastern Caribbean, of course, is a different time for Nigeria, is a different time for Brazil. And that's where a lot of our audience is in, in West and Central Africa, in Brazil, in South America. Um, and then of course, in the UK and the US, look, I love how I'm pointing to these places. <laughs> um, in all of these places, they, 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 there's so many different um timings for people to access the festival live i mean a lot of course a lot of people are looking at it after but the logistics really have been amazing to, to try and coordinate and we are really grateful to have a beautiful team of volunteers and just interested supporters across the globe who are like do this do that try this try that so it's been really amazing and anything you want to tack on to that sean um, in, connected to what Nadella is saying as well, um, when, the, when the idea came up to have 20 conversations for 2020, and then to also add on, it couldn't be a festival without cultural activities. Um, it's been really um, heartwarming that almost 99.9% .9 of the people that we've approached to get involved in the festival have from the, from the onset said, yes, we see the importance of this festival. 
We want to um, help the festival make an impact. This is the time, let's do it. Um, so that has also been exceedingly um, great for the development of the festival. And constant conversations with individuals who have been putting on initiatives that have to shift or pivot from being face-to-face -to, -face to, re to remote. They've spoken about having to stretch themselves, and Nadella just spoke about it as well. You're learning new things on the fly, you're trying things, you're getting it down while you're doing it. But at the same time, there's possibly a little more impact because you're finding people further afield. Is that, is that something that you found with this festival thus far, being able to impact and have conversations with a, with a wider audience? Oh, definitely, uh, definitely. And um, in terms of the, the amount of people, the, the, the width and breadth of people that we've been able to, to appeal to. So for example, most of our conversations, if not all, um, involve people in very diverse spaces with very diverse backgrounds who, because they're able to participate in this festival from the comfort and security of their own home, it was much easier for them to say yes and for them to participate. Um, and then in addition to that, because of the nature of the online platforms, all the things that we're doing are permanently recorded on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. So even people that for one reason or another may not be able to tune in live um, are really happy about the fact that they can then go back to all our various channels and our website to access this material you know, anytime in the future. And I think that's a, a huge benefit for the festival. Naturally, that was going to be a question that I was going to ask in terms of, look, where is this, where is this content curated? Uh, but Nadella, let me ask you, though, who are some of the people? Because Sean just spoke about almost everybody that you all approached, they said yes, which in and of itself must be a, give a feeling of affirmation. But what were some of the conversations, workshops, those facilitators that you all have had thus far, and who are we looking for in this week? Uh, okay, so... In terms of the conversations and the workshops, we've had everything from artists, filmmakers, um, folks who are advocates in the LGBTQI communities. Um, it, it's, it's just been academic, cultural. It's as broad as things can get, always grounded, however, in the experiences of people of African heritage and descent. So. I mean, I myself was amazed. It was, as Sean said, the, 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 the festival started off around these 20 conversations and we brought in these cultural activities. And yes, it was absolutely ambitious to try and program stuff for every single day of um, November. And in some, in some, on some days we have three and four things happening, like on the Saturdays. So it's a full festival. Um, there was... As Sean said, there are very few people that said, I can't make it this year. A lot of people that we have engaged have said yes to next year. Um, one that stands out for me is um, a particular DJ called DJ. Um, his, his DJ name is Casamania. And this is a lovely gentleman who we simply reached out to on Instagram. We saw his page. We saw his music. We're like, okay, we're having a Latin night. Um, with Brazilian DJs, um, compa DJs from Haiti. And there was this amazing gentleman who um, was grounded in, you know, the DR and, 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 um, and Puerto Rico and Cuban music. He came and he, he said he would play Afro House. I'd never heard of Afro House music. <laughs> and the session on Saturday night was mind blowing. People were dancing here on set. People all over were commenting. I mean, we had already had a good lead in with the compa and the Brazilian music. And then, you know, when we were interviewing him after, he started to talk about how, you know, he's an Orisha priest. And I'm thinking, yeah, this guy's sitting down in Brooklyn. And we've been liaising. He'd been helping us with technical stuff and whatnot. And he, because he actually helped to develop the capacity of the festival in terms of helping us, you know, access different platforms. And so that helped our learning as well. He was so generous with his information, with his involvement. He already said, yes, I'm there next year for a conversation. Because I was messaging Sean and he said, I'm like, why didn't we get this guy for a whole workshop and a conversation? He was and with regard to those And with regard to those workshops and that generosity of spirit, that is the point we're going to be coming back on when we return from this break. Stay with us.
Welcome back. We are speaking with uh, Nadella Oya and uh, Sean Samad about the Black Consciousness Festival. And this is something originating out of the Department of Brazilian Studies section of the Department of Modern Languages and Linguistics at the UWI. Now, Sean, we, we took the break with Nadella speaking about almost kind of casual reaching out or minimal touches and then having people dive on full bore. How, what, was, what was that process like? Because when I look at the, the, the themes, some of the people that you have in these conversations, it makes me wonder, but wait, now, how long they plan in this? And also the fact that you all were able to dive so deeply into so many themes and have engaging conversation. Um, what does that mean? Or what kind of response would you have had from the people who had latched on and said yes, people who have already done so for next year, as well as the students? of your UWI students? Right. Um, you know, that's a, that's a really interesting question, DK. And, and other people have asked that question. And sometimes when I think about the whole process of coming to this point, of coming to the point of scheduling conversations and activities, sometimes it's hard for me to, to recollect how it all happened because it happened in, so quickly and it happened so organically. Um, in most cases for the conversations, I, Nadella was kind of spearheading the cultural activities and I was, was more um, behind the conversations. But in, in both cases, I'm sure um, Nadella could, could kind of back me up on this. When we identified, it was one of two things, either we identified something we wanted to have in the festival and then went after somebody who we thought could provide it. Or sometimes in many cases it happened the other way around. So. We are people who, you know, are well connected in terms of what's going on in the world of culture and the world of arts and so, and so forth. And so when the idea of the festival came up and we had to come up with topics, we might have remembered something that we had seen or somebody's work that we had um, found notable and said, oh, you know what, maybe this person would be ideal for a conversation. Let's build a topic around them and find other similar individuals. And it really just happened totally organically. Um, I think because of the nature of what's happening in the world this year and how people really have had a lot more time to sit and reflect about where we are as people of African descent and what needs to happen going forward for the benefit of all of us as a people. Um, the, the generosity of spirit was above and beyond. People really saw the, the point of the festival, the need for the festival, and felt that it was important that they collaborate as well. Now, Nadella, in terms of not trying to bottle what happened or what is happening for this festival and try to duplicate it exactly, does this still kind of point a way forward for the way that some conversations can happen leading towards self-determination? Because sometimes it feels as though the powers that be will say, okay, well, we're doing this when there's already been a groundswell. What kind of precedent does this festival set? Well, for sure, in terms of, uh, as Sean mentioned, what has happened in early 2020 with the Black Lives Matter movement, and then we could hark back to a bunch of things, so civil rights movement, Black power. Um, we have always been associated with steady and quiet um, advocacy as a people, as well as rioting and burning things down and protesting. And what this festival has done is provided a platform where we can engage the hard discussions, the protesting, but in terms of, you know, voicing what is needed um, for us to start those hard discussions, as well as coming up with solutions, which is massively important. And so the festival from where we sit, um, yes, it's online. <laughs> Everyone is ready for COVID to end for us to do this in person. Um, and the energy that it has definitely um, contributed to the folks that have given us feedback is that it's healthy, <laughs> um, it is needed, it requires more refining because of course we have not put out a perfect product and already we're seeing ways that we could um, improve um, and that we need to resource more projects like this um, where it is consistent, where at the end of 30 days, um, the people who have engaged and viewed and participated and been part of the audience can absolutely leave off with uh, 
um, a bunch of, of, of new nuggets of information about what it means to be part of the African um, diaspora, to be part of that heritage, to be part of that history. And um, we know that at least one thing we can rest, rest well in knowing is that people have up to their game. Um, we've gotten, apart from people saying, oh, that was so interesting and so amazing and I did not know this and I learned so much, we, we've also gotten feedback where people have said, I've gotten calls, there are more people interested in the work that I'm doing. And so that ability to, 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 to foster and facilitate and agitate, you know, extra networking amongst our people and bridging folks and connecting folks, that to me has been of, of, of massive value. And it's definitely something that we are going to take moving forward. And we hope that other people will be able to achieve with similar um, exercises, bringing folks together in as tangible a way as possible, even though we've been using a digital format. Really Ubuntu vibrations. And um, in terms of not necessarily housekeeping, but keeping us up to date, there is a week left Sean, what is happening this week? How do people engage? Because it's one thing to look at it after, but while it is happening live, while that conversation is happening live, can people uh, message, share their thoughts, be a part in, an, in a really engaging and an interactive manner? Oh, definitely. Um, so for the rest of the week, we have um, three more conversations. Uh, one on Wednesday, that's good. No, one today actually, sorry, on resistance and restitution in Trinidad's carnival, which will feature the new management, Parman Blue Devils, uh, Jordan Briggs, who's a young photographer who's focused on uh, taking photos of Moko Jumbies, and Dr. Susan Burke, who's out of the cultural studies section at the University of the West Indies. On Wednesday, we have a talk on faith, healing, and ancestry that brings um, Dr. Kira Malika Daniels out of the US, she's Haitian American. She'll be talking with Caroline Amanda Borges, who's out of Brazil and is doing a lot of work on women's health and menstrual issues. And they will be uh, chatting with Celine Camille Griffith, who's an, a radio personality here in Trinidad. Um, and then the last conversation for this week is on Friday, creating space to resist and repair um, the case of Salvador's Afro Blocos, which brings three Brazilians who have been involved in carnival in Bahia, in Salvador, Bahia specifically, talking with Heather McIntosh Simon. Um, on Monday, Monday is the last day for the festival, and we have three really interesting conversations scheduled. All the conversations people can uh, participate in by registering to be a part of the Zoom webinar, and that way they can ask questions of the participants, etc. Or they can view on Facebook Live as well and ask questions there. In addition, outside of the conversations, um, tomorrow we have a Dance With Your Daughter movement workshop um, that's being put on uh, tomorrow at 7. And then on Thursday, we have a limbo workshop. And, um, and then over the weekend, we're going to have some additional cultural activities as well. So we do really have a packed schedule for the rest of the week, both of conversations, um, you know, just really engaging um, discussions and dialogue, as well as cultural activities. Quite a, a full package. And we really want to thank you for the work that you are doing, that you've helped spark and hopefully inspired others to just carry that torch forward so that we can fan the flame in terms of what is being done with regard to the black consciousness, both in Trinidad and Tobago and the entire African diaspora. Sean, we want to thank you so much, as well as you, Nadella, and the members of your team. And on behalf of the entire news team, I want to thank you for tuning in this evening. I'm DK Rosta. Have a good night.